Oh, Hello, everybody. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Aurora. <laughs> Oh, oh no. <laughs> well, to be fair though, if you look at how things left off last week, that's not exactly an inappropriate beginning to uh, to the game. So, um, how's everybody doing this week? Doing well? Yeah. <laughs> I have to scroll past all of our bad rolls to get back to where we are now. Yeah. Gotcha. We're, doing, we're doing well. We're we're gonna roll well. We're gonna do well. It's we gonna be reset. Good. We we hit the reset button on the RNG. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we've also all had a conversation with with Arvin, right? Like we all participated in a conversation I with Arvin. Have, I have. So, I played D and D with Ian in between then and now. And so that gives an opportunity for all of your bad luck to be sucked out of you and sent over to him. <laughs> so, so he will do terribly later on today. But in the meanwhile, you guys can do well. So, you know, love you, Ian. <laughs> So anyways, uh, one last thing before we uh, pick back up. Last week, we got to say happy birthday to Jake, who uh, became an old man. Uh, this week, we get to say happy birthday to Tesh, who is also an old man. And not not you, Neil. Aww. Not not new bio, Neil. <laughs> Your birthday is not for another two months, I think, right? Uh, July. Three it's months. It. Three months. It's gotcha. All right. So <clears throat> last time when we played... Uh, a campaign started off just really quickly. Campaign started off with y'all kind of like bumping into each other in the middle of nowhere. Uh, assumptions about sending over a corpse, um, uh, misunderstandings put aside. Wait, you dug up my dead friend? Misunderstandings putting aside. All right, money. let's all go to this place. Give me money. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, um, uh, you guys travel for a while. Came across a cache of goods. Maybe an old story that we never got to hear the details about. We, there were bones and uh, goblins everywhere. And uh, eventually stumbled across the valley that has uh, like kind of over it, growing out of this large, I'm going to say rock face, because I don't want to quite use the word mountain over in that the region for where it is. But this large rock face, very large formation, almost like a mountain. Um, this, uh, this keep that seems to be coming over here with nothing else around. Um, spent the night, heard some weird noises, chittering or, or something like that. Uh, heard an elk die. The next day, traveled over to the place. Uh, saw like old buildings. Um, I think it was two different buildings you saw. Both of them clearly haven't been not inhabited in well over a hundred years. And then, um, and then finally came to the door. I was like, oh, we can scale this like effectively mountainside to try to get higher up to climb into the place. But there's a legit door. And the likelihood of anybody hearing us try to get in is going to be pretty slim. Let's try to break in. Let's do it. And um, we should have taken the cliff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Tried, you did. Succeed, you did not. Um, <laughs> so a couple of nifty ideas later on. You got the little flappy, like kind of like swinging the door open part to be like, who's out there? Uh, part open, but it still has bars in front of it. You broke a dagger and some pride. So why don't we pick up the uh, the, the the scene with uh, you guys had just opened up that door and you probably just like took a minute, like recollecting yourselves. Like, all right, we get that open. What are we going to do next? You know, maybe even just taking a step back or, or sitting down. I don't think anybody's used any uh, powers. So you don't need a short rest yet. Oh, I, I mean, I used a power. I used a, uh, a snowball out of anger. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Oh, and broke a dart. <laughs> that was so yeah, funny. Yeah, that, that dart that I was hoping would be useful. Was that Neil that rolled the natty one? I think, I think it was. was. I think yeah. it might have actually been, yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <sighs> let, let, let's be honest. I'm pretty sure we all rolled natty ones at some point. Actually, I don't know, Jake, Jake, did you roll a natty one last week? Probably. No, we, yeah. We, I was we, like, had, we <laughs> definitely had more 20s than ones. I thought yeah. we only had one one. No, there were a couple of ones, but I think I don't there think, were a couple of ones. I don't remember any big I failures rolled. over on Jake's side, so Yeah, I definitely rolled a one at one point. Um I think it was in navigating <laughs> at one point. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Alright, so uh, so you guys took your one minute of rest, relaxing. Yeah, just kinda like of eight. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Scott, just do you do you wanna um announce the uh daddy stuff? Is oh, it? oh okay. Yeah, sure, that's not a bad idea. Um, so, so uh, before we pick it up, this is oh, new no. to two of our players, uh, Jake and Tesh. But um, we have uh, going live this session. 
the loyalty points that uh, the Twitch extension um, has. So those loyalty points allow you to um, uh, to kind of like spend uh, what we call daddies on this channel. That's right. Um, and you could uh, cause things that take effect immediately in game. So whether if they be, actually I haven't pulled up right here. So whether if they be the smaller things like um, uh, Twitch, chat pool, uh, Twitch chat pool of luck, little pool of luck that they can pull uh, from and, and affects their die rolls, uh, prayer to the martyr, uh, aid of the martyr, uh, fortune's favor, curse of a deer. And then of course, there is the trump card. And we know how, what, how much fun that one is. So um, yeah. So, you know, spend them or not as you see fit. Um, I think the reason why Neil brought it up is because he's hoping that nobody spends any uh, trump cards and somebody, uh, you know, causes good stuff to happen for the sake of the party succeeding in opening this door. Or at least what everyone wastes all their daddies on the small stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that's not necessarily a bad thing. All right, go ahead, guys. I'll let you take it away. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> like, we want me to set the scene? No, 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 I'm just... I can, I can set the scene done. for you. We're looking at this metal door. We're all yeah, just no, standing I... there like, fuck. So that thing is just open. This is like that moment of, yeah. Fuck, that was just the, sla the latch. So, uh, <laughs> we, got, we got this bit open. What now? Uh, can we? I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna walk up to it and dancing lights inside and see if I can see anything through the the, the thing. A a absolutely, you cast your spell. And you actually, no, I actually I do have to check if I can actually cast the spell. I keep forgetting this. Good, I cast it. <laughs> okay, so you cast dancing lights inside, and the first thing you do is you're pushing dancing lights into the area, and you can just see as I described beforehand before somebody had used like their ability to. Um, I think this was Jake. And use your ability yes. to kind of like see through the door with sift. Uh, so more or less just kind of like see what was on the other side, but without actually seeing with your eyes. Just kind of like feel things. So when you put the dancing <laughs> lights in, it does allow uh, a certain amount of light to go in. And this is a pretty long range. I mean, you're what? Level one, right? So it's 110 feet. You can send those lights in there. Oh, yeah. And so as far back as those lights can go, you can see that the tunnel just goes in and goes straight. Excuse me. It goes straight for a considerable period of time. Let's say 80 feet-ish or so before finally they have to they come to a stop and you're kind of like looking down there and you're like where can they go you spin them around and um and you send something like out the hallway like ah oh, okay the door the, the 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 hallway here kind of like curves to the side so you're gonna have to when you go in 80 feet straight or so and then there's gonna be a turn to the side for wherever that is but coming back to closer where you are as I described several times uh, last session, uh, the walls on the inside are very well formed. They clearly work stone, so on and so forth. But the bottom of the door uh, uh, of the thing, like you're kind of like looking there and, and looking down, you can see like the erosion of the water has really affected the under the door part right here. I mean, it's allowed for water to kind of like seep its way in slowly, then a bit more, then a bit more. And that erosion stretches back not quite too far maybe about 20 feet back or so where it comes to like a little pointed end and uh it gets like deeper and deeper as it makes its way back towards the door because again erosion just takes a long time to, to take effect it's okay just just give me a month and i'll get this with ray of frost <laughs> uh well fuck any ideas? Hmm. Remember, you're being very quiet. <laughs> um, can I use, I don't know if I can use Sift again to get a better look at the lock and kind of like target that area or? Uh, no, I, I, unfortunately, um, uh, from where you are, you could probably kind of like make an actual perception check to try to look around and see what you can see. Okay, so I'll do that then. Well. Okay, so you, you more or less using his light and trying to like angle your face to the 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 the, the to try to angle your face to see like which way you can see inside, see anything more about the lock, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, is really difficult to see. I mean, simple fact of the matter, it is. And even if he takes the light away, so you can actually see with your dark vision inside there, it's difficult. But you do see that literally there is a bit of a crank that's turned that makes it so that the door locks 
on either side. So however it is you need to, you need to turn that crank the opposite direction to unlock the door from, from the either side. You don't, you don't- So could I, could I get rope and tie like little noosey thing in it and then like try and put it through the bars, loop it around and then pull? I mean, absolutely you can try. Um, uh, the idea is that, that these bars themselves don't have handles or anything like jutted on them. So it would okay. be, uh, it would be a circular thing, but there Wait, are of course, a wheel? Oh, it's a wheel. Yeah. Exactly. There are of course struts that, that are, uh, that are holding it like much like a steering wheel. So what you just described, Tash, yeah. Do we have anything that we can bend into a hook? I imagine uh, amongst your equipment, you could certainly have, uh, somebody probably has a crowbar. You know what I mean? Because you do have adventuring equipment. Sometimes you just need to bust open a chest. So. <clears throat> Fuck. It, I, don't, uh, I can get a better look in there with a steel mirror though. Oh, there you go. Actually, that's that's Use actually that a really good idea. Uh, so why don't, I, why don't I you roll a perception check as well? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh! oh. Wow. Wow. Nice. Um, uh, the birthday luck coming in. <laughs> uh, so, so you, uh, oh, that's awesome. So you grab the steel merit, you slip your hand in there the best you can. It's mostly to the extent of your fingers. It feels a little precarious, but, but you are able to angle it right enough that you can actually look inside and look about. And you can actually see that while it is true that that wheel is every bit as I've described, the years that have passed, not only have they not been kind to the door, but they've also been able to kind of expose flaws because like rust and a little bit of peeling and whatnot to exaggerate areas that you otherwise maybe not would have seen. Um, that wheel is very old, has been used many times, likely by people that are like wielding, that have like armor, like uh, uh, metal gloves and stuff like that. It's done a considerable amount of damage to the actual wheel. Um, little frayed up areas actually exist on the sides. Maybe they're actually blades or something meant to be a trap for somebody that were trying to open the wheel from the inside, whatever the case may be. Um, it definitely allows for something to be dropped in there to be snagged. Okay. Oh, uh, one more oh. detail. Uh, oh. Looking at the grooves of uh, how everything's uh, set up, you can see like which way the wheel is supposed to turn and, and, and so yep. on and so forth as well. Mm -hmm. uh, he will relay this all in painful detail, like every little tiny little thing matters even if it doesn't, and then it just pulls it back out. We need something to hook onto the... Uh, maybe blades? The things on the on the wheel. I'm sorry, there's blades on the wheel? There's something that might look like maybe a trap. It's ju things jutting off the sides of the wheel. Something we can snag is what it definitely is. I suppose it's worth a shot. I, I do not have any rope. Do you have any rope? I have rope. Perfect. <laughs> uh, do we have anything that can hook it? I don't believe I have anything. I have some manacles. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I mean, that might actually work. That's not a bad idea. Manacles have got a, a small length of chain between them, correct? Correct. So if you attach both manacles to it, all you have to do is hook a blade through a chain link. I like it. Okay. Yes. Let's, so, let's try. So then let's here's, this thing. <laughs> here's here's the question. Here, here's the million dollar question. How is it that you're going to get the manacles passed through? Uh, these little bars down and clamped on to the uh, the area below. Because the manacles the, the manacles are thin enough, you can, with effort, work them through the bars. You're pretty sure of that. It's one of those things where you're like, I know I can get this door through the couch. It's just going to need a little love. You know what I mean? Uh, sorry, this couch through the door. I said that backwards. This is going to need a little love. <laughs> this door through the couch, yeah. Um, uh, <coughs> but once you get that through, how are you going to finesse it down to clamp it onto the uh, the wheel? Uh, if oh no, the manacles don't need to be clamped. No, no, no. He means how how are we going to uh, accurately hook it onto the thing? Because the rope will go through the the thing, and then we won't have much movement. 
Well, I, I believe the accurate term here is um, trial and error. Ah, there you go. <laughs> have, there you, go. have you ever played uh, played one of those games where you just push the button and it goes, tries to grab it? We're, this is this is the long, extended, boring form of that where you take twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Unfortunately, like you can't it. take a 20 because there's a risk for failure, but you can certainly roll until you succeed if you want to take that approach. Uh, oh, before no. we just roll till you succeed, uh, any any um, uh, direction that you want to give for actual methods here? Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Valren is, is tall-ish, but skinny, slim. Yes. So... If we have Valorin with his skinny, lanky arm through the thing, doing the finesse <laughs> work, and then, uh, and then, Hulky Muck, uh, Strunk Boy, ah, oh, fuck, uh, holding on to the thing to make sure that he doesn't just drop it through, and then we teamwork like that. And maybe, Wait. maybe, um, maybe while you're doing that, uh, Rarin can hold the mirror and direct. I mean, that's not a bad idea. Mm. That works, right? <laughs> oh, can I fit my arm uh, at least a little bit through of the? You can, you can get as far in as your wrist, so it's like you can you can kind of move your yeah. fingers, yeah. Uh, he's, yeah. Well, so if he was greased up, do you think he could get it any further? It's actually not a bad uh, uh, idea. It's it's certainly a roll, and it would allow for a roll. You know, what we, we have some cougar meat, right? You do? That's probably got some fat on it. You a could just absolutely now. Granted, we could granted. just take two of, try and bench two of the balls out by weakening them. Mountain, so mountain, have... mountain lions are extremely lean. Like they're very lean fat uh, meat. However, you guys did butcher it very well. If I remember correctly, Jake rolled insanely well in doing so. So, so um, you guys would definitely be able to scrape out the um, uh, like fat globs, and you could definitely grease up your arm. Okay. <laughs> He would be reluctant, like... Grease it up, boy. Uh... <laughs> Alright, why don't you, uh, why don't you roll me your decks to, um, to, to do this there, Val? Okay. Hey. You actually, your, your arm slips in no problem. You're able to get in there almost to elbow deep. I mean, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure on your arm. It's very uncomfortable. It's squeezing and whatnot and, and everything, but you you are almost elbow deep in this uh, All right. door. So, um, visuals aside, so you're holding this thing and you're trying to lower it down and clamp it. You have uh, a rope was tied on to the, uh, the end of the manacle by, uh, you know, one of you guys to make sure that the half works holding it and it doesn't just get straight dropped. If it starts to drop, you're just like, yeah. just grab it, just pull it back in or whatever. <laughs> and then from here, I believe the idea was you wanted to kind of clamp onto the actual uh, uh, wheel. Did you have a specific direction that you want to do or am I taking uh, creative liberties on this one? Uh, well, I, I wanted to obviously turn it the direction I can see it needs to be turned. Of course. Uh, and I wanted to hook it onto one of the things that's on the edge. Even if it takes a couple of pulls, I want to use those to sort of uh, pull it, pull it round. Okay. So, um, why don't you roll for me? Good luck. Another dexterity check. Now I was going to make you roll a disadvantage, but Neil earned you a normal roll. So thank you. <laughs> Always <Yeah>. limber. <laughs> Always. Oh, that was nearly, damn it. All right. So you're swinging this thing back and forth for a while, trying to get it in there. I mean, we're talking spending a solid 10 minutes or so working on this. Unfortunately, it is not going in your favor. Uh, swinging the thing, the metal's clanging against the metal, rattling against the metal. There's moments where you're like, I, I, oh, shit. A couple of times, uh, uh, you're like, one, and he has to like tug it to make sure it doesn't get too lost. But it still is not able to, to catch on in that 10 minute period of time. Okay. I'm going to try something. It's going to be painful. And I'm going to do this. Oh. And you're going to see you're going to see a piece of his skin on his hand lift off, burn away with sort of green sort of flame, and then he's got a bit of light around his, uh, a bit of green light glowing around his arm, and he's going to try again. Okay, before you do that, let me just check something really quickly. Um... I'm also going to uh, cast guidance on you. Oh, hey! hey. 
Is it funny how you're always like, oh wait, I can do something here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does Guidance do in this one again? Uh, do you want me to put it in the thing? Uh, yeast. Just because I, I forget the differences between 5e and this one. There you go. Ah, that's right. All right, so why don't you... Oh, um, plus one, sorry. So that's another plus one, sorry. Go ahead, so why don't you roll for me, sir? Eighteen. Okay, uh -huh. so before you do anything else, I do want to make sure you know that the uh, Twitch chat pool of luck was filled up three times, so you actually have three of them to pull from. As a reminder Ooh. of way this works, as in I, I just got to make the... Um, uh, what's it called? Like I had last time, Neil. Uh, a, button. a macro that you guys can press that just rolls it for you. So the way it works is that at any point in time, when you're rolling a d20, you can add an additional d4 to the roll. You may choose to do so before or after you roll, uh, but before you know the result, of course. So you know you rolled a 16 plus 2 is 18. You're welcome to add a d4 to that if you would like. I think this is the roll we do it. No, I, I think we do it on this one just to make sure. I mean, we don't want to be stuck by this door. Roll. Yeah, no, I don't. Well, that's I guess true. We that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Neil's like, Neil's like, no, no, no. You use it to stop yourself from failing bad stuff. Okay, being stuck behind a door is bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so just roll one d four. Uh, go right ahead. Hey, I'll take that. So that's twenty one. Uh, twenty one. So what happens is you continue swinging this thing back and forth and back and forth, and you do eventually get it snagged on, like the, the, the rope or whatever snagged on those metal portions. You couldn't quite get a, um, a manacle snagged on the, uh, the, the jutted areas. And then you, you lose the ability to continue maneuvering the rope. It's frustrating. You can't do it. So now you're like tugging at it and trying to like swing it and do all these different things. And unfortunately, you just cannot get it to work. So in your finagling, you end up dropping it again. And you're like, one! And he just gives this hard tug. And mind you, it's been about 22 minutes at this point since you guys walked up here, sort of greasing up your arm and everything this time around. And, and, and you're like, what? And he gives this hard tug. Just by sheer luck, the way that he tugged that <clears throat> happened to just get the manacles almost like knotted around one of the struts or bars that go from the center of the wheel out to the outer edge of the wheel. And the rope kind of gets snagged around a couple of the little jutted areas in the actual wheel itself. It's like tangled in this perfect mess that so long as tension is not released from the rope, that you should be good. From here, I need you to make a strength check. And that's gonna be um that's gonna be on you one. Don't let go. <laughs> okay. We've already had 120. It's time for our second one. Oh! <laughs> oh! oh my god! Oh, Neil oh. just just let the luck go for a second. <laughs> is what happened. I'm there. taking all the credit for the door. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you just grab it. So yeah. he's like one, yeah. and you literally just get it lodged there. And he's like, you know, kind of like looks. At, it looks good. Looks good, or however he phrases it. And you just grab this thing and you just hard tug, like pull, you know, pulling all, all your uh, lats, or whatever, as hard as you can, pulling and pulling. And then just kind of like where you're standing there, Tesh, you can see. The thing is actually starting to grind. It's, you can see it's starting to grind more and more and more. And then finally, you just still like, one last heave, and you hear a loud clank as the thing's just being slowly grind, 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 and then just snaps into place. The door is unlocked. I'm gonna rush through that door. Hold on. <laughs> oh, no, no, my arm, my arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of you opening it with me still stuck in it. <laughs> Tesh, I need you to make me a dexterity save, but because your oh, arm's no. stuck in the door, I need you to do it with disadvantage. Oh, no. Uh, actually, how do I roll disadvantage on this? I think I've forgotten. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, oh, oh my god. I totally have 5e in my head because we were building characters last oh, night. Man. I was up for like five over five hours building characters last night. So, um, I'm so sorry. I was going to say, I'm like, I don't know how to do it on this. That, that, that doesn't apply. Just roll me a dexterity, a, a reflex save. <laughs> oh, reflex save. I was saying that like, that's not a thing. Yeah, yeah no, you're right. you're right. Sorry. Wow. Um, so, and where you guys are in relation to the door. Um, so you are, Tasha, so obviously your arm was in the door. You were as close <laughs> yep. as you could be just trying to like yank at the door where you can. I want you to roll me um, a reflex save as well, Jake, but Neil, I imagine your character wasn't standing immediately by the door? 
Once he said oh. it's good, there's no reason to be in standing, That's a good standing point, there yeah. with a mirror, right? Yep. Get the fuck out of the way. Yep. Okay, cool. So what ends up happening is this door clank unlocks. As beforehand, you weren't able to see any magics uh, anywhere on the door. Nothing like that existed. And that makes sense because there weren't any magics on the door. Um, uh, what you did not see, however, was that there was a little bit of a, a trap mechanism that was uh, locked into the top edge of the door. You know, further in investigation of the actual edge of the door may have found it, but where it was on the, uh, the inside where you were checking out the locking mechanism, you didn't see it linked there. So, clank, and all of a sudden, right in front of uh, where the door is, uh, in a doorway, that hallway where you guys are standing, the door is kind of set and recessed into, um, uh, three, no, four, sorry, because of how wide the door is, four spears drop down from the ceiling, okay? Now, from the actual door itself, the door actually almost like vibrates and sends outwards a, uh, a wave of rust. Um, so... Oh, no. This is how I die. <laughs> uh, I need this click over here. I just gave up a, a one health for this. This is not good. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll be fine. Unless you haven't had your tetanus jam, in which case you most likely die. I mean, I mean, I, the, the, the parent they'll seem like the sort of place that would make you take them <laughs> if they existed. <laughs> so from the from the wave of rust outwards, it actually isn't that bad. Uh, at five points of damage, it actually gets divided by two for both of you guys because Val, I, I gave you a penalty in my head. You still rolled well enough that you passed the save. So you guys only take two points of damage from the wave of rust coming outwards. Do either of you have DR? I can't recall. Uh, D, uh, damage reduction. Oh, I don't think so. Okay, I didn't think uh, so. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I don't know where I'd find that, but I don't believe it. Either. I know Jake can have DR at times, but I wasn't sure if either of your characters are built that way. And then against you there, um, uh, Tesh, I have to do this one. Um, you guys are... I don't think I ever give you guys tokens. That's funny. So let me do it this way then. All right. So of the spears that come launching down. So as those spears come launching down, uh, just because like how wide you are inside the area that you're in, only three of them had a chance of hitting you. But like it's almost like you had seen everything. You were kind of like alert as you like just felt the vibration, saw everything going on. So all of a sudden you like look up just in time to like just barely step out of the way of one of the first spears coming down. The two of the other four were so far apart from you. One of them just barely missing you because of how far away it was. Just from your positioning, and the other one just how far away it was because of its positioning from you. However, the fourth spear, the one that you just kind of like slid out of the way of one into the path of, does in fact hit you. And that spear does to you. Oh, you were so lucky! Oh. I did like no damage to you, this sucks. Oh. I mean, it's great. <laughs> what dice is that? D8. That could have killed me. Oh like, that could have killed me. Oh. Uh. That could have killed me when I was at full health. <laughs> if that rolled up well enough. <laughs> yep. So, uh... So yep. You just hear, you hear a very embarrassing, not at all dignified scream of pain. <laughs> and he's like, ah, ah, yeah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you now go rushing forward into the door, guy? <laughs> yes. Uh, so, um, uh, Tess, you struggle. You eventually pull your now bleeding arm out of the uh, 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 the thing, and you guys can finally push take open. all the blood and, and gunk off it. No. Ra wrap off the wound. Take the wound. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think that works for. I don't think that works for rust. No. no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> So um, you guys, uh, uh, you go forward, Jake, and you push the door open. You actually like a uh, heavy heave the door open. Uh, and this is actually when you discover that the door does not push inwards. It's actually you end up grabbing the, the bars or wherever it is you can because it's the only spot that you can grab. The door is actually meant to be pulled outwards. So um, and so it's a little difficult for you to do, but eventually you just kind of like get it in the right spot, get enough momentum, you can heave the door so this, open. Are the spears actually coming out of the roof or did they just launch? They, they um, my apologies, they jutted down out of the roof, they launched down. So they're not like 
set in there anymore. You know oh, what okay. I mean? so now there's just spears. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Old and beat up, broken, Which like they don't have... I was just saying they don't really have value because because the spear tips yeah. themselves are like rusted and the old wood is like old and rotted. It's just old. That's worse. Yeah. <laughs> so you pull the door open, leaving you guys finally to see the inside of the actual the actual area. <clears throat> Good job. Ow. Well, there's the traps. <sighs> I wouldn't have thought they'd have so many traps with such a large door. Well, I, I guess what was kept in this fort. I guess we should that be careful was... going forward. I think. I guess that means it was abandoned, purposefully. Hmm. Let's hope. One way to find out. I am not going in there first. <laughs> He's just like. I mean, he just steps back. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> He's like ladies, holding his arm. Ladies first. Oh, Neil. Pine? Yes. Uh, we'll we'll send send uh, send the human <laughs> first, of course, because I can see what I might walk into. Very well. Does anyone well, have we, a torch or a lamp? We do have uh, we do have another human with us, right? We do. Uh, I'm actually gonna. I'll be like, oh, we need light, dancing light. <laughs> this is like hovering over you now. Excellent. <laughs> so, um, so you now have because the light makes what five globes, I believe, that each emit light. So you can have yeah, like and I'll put them like you can have like one, one like between of... the two of you, is it between like in the middle of the group of you, one behind you, and then like three kind of like floating in front. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, so they do spread out pretty well. Dancing light's a very, uh, very useful style. Uh, Times like this that you wish you had a shield. <laughs> Wait, you've just had spears lobbed at you down this long corridor. No, they came from the roof. They didn't come down the corridor. They came from the roof. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah. Can we try looking and to see if we can see more traps that are set up down this corridor? That's yeah, a good idea. Yeah. Sure, Who, who's going to go check it out? <laughs> I mean, who's the most perceptive one? Uh, I will. Okay, go right ahead. Uh, now, do you want to use? Do you want to spend a ton of time doing this, Jake, or do you want to like walk through and just cast sift a few times? Oh no, I know. He has like bonus to perception. Uh, yeah, I can. I can cast sift. S sift gives you a minus five, but you can get it done quickly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want me to put sift in the chat? Uh, yeah. Pop it into chat and then roll one perception, and we'll assume you cast sift twice with that with that result. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I like the idea of going slow and steady with this. I wish when you clicked that, it rolled the check for you. All yeah. right, that's a really good. That's a really good result. That's awesome. You are, you're our perceptive boy. <laughs> um. So, anyways, so you go walking through the uh, the area, and you literally just kind of like as you come walking in, the first thing you do is you kind of reach into yourself and then out into the area around you, literally feeling the walls, the ceiling, the floor, feeling the air, everything that's inside there all at once. And what what is Sift? Is it a swift action cast or, or whatever it is? Um, and uh, and feeling everything around you um, all instantaneously, as though you had spent minutes searching the area. And in the first immediate spot, you do in fact uh, notice a trap, but it's one that you were already aware of. The, uh, the door behind you, um, has the, the, the bladed uh, wheel that exists you know, on it for if you were to turn it without protected hands, so on and so forth. Um, walking forward a little bit, feeling a bit more comfortable, a bit more safe with the situation, um, you go and you do it again. And you end up searching, sifting again, and again, in this area, it seems like everything's fine. It seems like all the traps, at least in this initial corridor, have been... Um, uh, subsided. Maybe it'll be different when you go further in, but for this quarter, you feel safe. Okay, so I'd just more or less say all the traps seem to be centered around the door. I think the rest of the corridor is safe. Good. Good. <sighs> Should yeah. we uh, continue? Are you feeling up to it, um, Valoran? As long as I don't go first. <laughs> 
Should we shut the door behind us? Even though I don't know if any of us have gauntlets on that actually. Yes, there is the matter of the blades. Mm. One, it could keep something bad from coming in to corner us, or it could keep us cornered if we're running from something bad. Well, if the animals are what we're fearing, uh, we could just pull it, pull it closed and not actually use the mock. That's that way we can idea. still push it over. Yeah, that seems, that seems pretty good. Like, close it too, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you guys take this big heavy door and because it was an out push you have to don't, grab don't it from the inside the thing. Yeah, yeah. grab the, the bars <laughs> and you're like, once you get struggling and try to pull as hard as you can you eventually pull it inwards uh, before you shut the door while you have like a clear open path because you know it's like you know the door's open and out of your way so the ground before you was like is like bare do you pick up your broken dart or a broken dagger or anything like that while, while you're here <laughs> I'll take, well, I'll, take the broken dart. I'll take the I'll take the broken dart for sentimental reasons. Uh, and you pull you pull the thing shut uh, without trying to uh, engage the lock. Okay, so you pull the thing shut and doof, it sits there. Now you guys can um, uh, start making your way down this corridor and where it turns and starts going. Uh, so now you can actually see where it bends. So with Neil in front, I believe Tesh second and um, uh, Jake third. You guys I mean, are. I'll, I'll go. I'll go up front if you want. Just, I would uh, like to go last. I would. I would <laughs> be checking every new part for to see if there's any more traps that we come up against. All right, perfect. So when you come around the bend up front, and then so you'll have Jake last. Um, when you guys come around the bend uh, up front that Jake had noticed earlier, I sorry that Tesh had noticed earlier, um, you see that it immediately turns and actually opens up into a stairwell. It's actually the the turn itself uh, opens to a much wider corridor. It's about. Um, I want to say, uh, at its widest point, seven and a half, eight feet wide. Um, the corridor is a little bit different. Uh, like down here, it is hewn, like it is, it is crafted, but it seems less so. It doesn't have like the strict squared off, uh, uh, uh corridor that it did before. It has almost like a, a, a bowed look to it in the walls or whatever. So it just gives it a, a less worked, um, stone area because it seems more tunnelish and less corridor ish but nonetheless there's a ton of stairs that are going um up them and all the stairs are very well built um you guys uh can start making your way up there obviously uh, are you just occasionally randomly popping a, a sift for me sir yeah why don't you roll me the one before you start climbing the stairs yeah let's let's just logically as well stairs are a great place to put a trap yeah. So presumably there's one step that everyone will go and put their foot on, left or right footed, or you know like one or two steps at the start. Rarin would test that like with a toe or a hand, whichever he can stay far and just depress it. The the first like two three steps, whatever you press, nothing seems to, nothing seems to be there. I more expect that. The, these, they're fairly smart. Uh, they might have put something further up where it's harder to get out of the way of... If there's a trap here, we can go back down the hallway. If we're already on the stairs, it's harder to get out of the way. I suppose that has a certain sort of logic. So far, a lot of their traps have been for uh, not the initial interaction, but the uh, the important interaction. Remember, the Mal are warlike. If you were going to hold a superior numbered foe, you would hold them on the stairs. Therefore, you wouldn't want to trap yourself. This is true. Obviously, you're right, though. Assume everything is trapped, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Assume the worst, expect the distance. <laughs> Alright, so, so I roll a perception. Yeah, roll me a perception check. Voice. Okay. Times like this, oh. I'm glad one is going first. So when you first, when you're at the bottom of the stairwell down here, and the stairs are going to climb up for a considerable bit, it seems like the stairs are going to be a lot of what you're about to start spending your time doing. 
you don't notice anything. You just, there's no traps in here. Everything seems perfectly fine. You know, um, the wall behind you seems normal. The stairs seem normal. Everything seems normal. So you guys are going to start your ascent. Randomly at some point in time throughout it, you're just going to kind of like, feels like it's been a while, pop the sift again. Because you're not going to do it literally every other step. It'd be obnoxious. Yeah. But you, you are going to pick times where you're like, I'm, I kind of get in this like feeling. And you're going to pop it then. So feel free to uh, to pop uh, one more perception check for me. Yeah. Let me give myself guidance as well. Ah. <laughs> He's like, I'm having a, a feeling. Bing! Yeah. <laughs> My trap senses are tingling. Roll a one, roll a one, roll a one, roll a one. Uh, so that's oh, an extra one. that's a 16. That's pretty good. So so as you guys are making your way uh, along this, all of a sudden, um, you, you just kind of get this feeling. And so you stop and you, um, you, you just look. You don't notice any traps in the sense of there's no, like, pressure plates. There's no trip wires or anything like that. But strangely enough, as you're walking along, you notice, because you're first, Literally right above where um, uh, Neil is standing, in front of where uh, Tesh is standing, uh, there's uh, uh, some strange grooves in the foot uh, in, in the step that, that Neil is standing on. Very strange looking uh, grooves. And you can also tell in the ceiling, just because of like the way that your mind reaches outwards, that the ceiling overhead also happens to have these very strange um, like holes that exist inside them. Um, uh, it's just designed a little off. Uh, but lastly, you can also feel the wall to the left of where they are is um, uh, has these like indents in it. Um, you almost think it's a crease that goes straight through the wall. Maybe there's a secret door there or something like that. However, you don't know what triggers any of this, if anything, or if it was just a strange design without further investigation, you know, with the hands and eyes. So, so I'm immediately... Tell everybody to stop and just relay that information. I love that copy paste from the DM. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> no point reproducing it, is there? <sighs> okay. So. I can check it out. quite tense. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> so, what, what do we do? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this could be a door, or it could be a trap. My money is probably on trap, but I don't know where the trigger is. Oh. So, do we just press on? We should probably check it, I suppose. Uh, okay. Can we all have a, a uh, can we have a look around to see if we can see what you, might? You guys be can intrigued. aid him in uh, in this like searching of the ceiling, the floor, the the wall, and we'll make one single check with a with a plus one for you from their aid. Uh, but mostly, we can do it one of two ways. You can take a plus two, uh, or you can take a plus one and get it done a little bit quicker. Um, I guess I'll just take the plus one, get it done a bit quicker, and then guidance myself for another plus one. Okay, there you go. <laughs> that little, so, that little and grin. Remember, <laughs> remember, roll the the, bo the the bonus thing we have, if it's bad. <laughs> All right, let's see. You have three currently, because another one was put into it. Okay. Nice. Wow. Is okay. that 25? Yes, yeah, 25. Yeah, I think we're happy with that. Yeah, that's yep. a pretty good roll. So you notice that the, uh, kind of like going in and checking it out, um, the grooves that are in the, the, the floor down below, it almost looks like they're, they're you realize they're, they're circles. And then the ceiling immediately above them, they seem to line up. The circles in the ceiling overhead oh, no. also seem like <laughs> they're the same circumference of circles. So something must drop down and like lock into place down below. But what's strange is that those grooves are actually set up in a way that if you actually follow along it, it's not just along one step, it also goes partially up two steps above it, almost making like a swooping formation. But going over, and that was Val who investigated that one because it was what he was familiar with. The other two going over and investigating the, the wall over there, you realize that this wall does in fact pop open, it pops open, but it pops open in a circular sort of fashion. 
how it, how it opens, it seems like the, the wall itself literally rolls to the side for whatever triggers it. So that it's a circular hole in the wall that literally rolls into one of the, um, the, the walls adjacent to it, which must be hollowed out, and uh, opens to whatever cavity is over there. Not entirely sure what that is, but you do not find the triggering mechanism because you believe uh, from everything that you're telling that it's overhead. Okay. Uh, so, very, very important question. The part of the wall that rolls away, it, it, like that, is that opening on the outside of the, the line or the inside of the line? Basically, in inside. Up the stairs okay, so from it. Okay, okay. <laughs> yep. So we all should get on the inside of that line before we do anything. Do you want to be by the inside of the line? So if there's like walking up the stairs, there's like yeah, that. You want to be above it. You want to, yeah. And then the wall opens up also on the inside. Yeah, so the inside is above it, essentially Correct. into the car. Correct. This is the is potential I mean. death line. Yep. We all yeah. want to be on this side. Uh, yeah, the we want to be above. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, so just slowly, st don't step any further than he has stepped. Uh, just slowly move up a little bit, and uh, we will try and fit in on the other side. Okay, so you guys all easily are all able to get past, like, with the, the, the uh, something we drop from the ceiling, in theoretically bars, because, you know, it's cylindrical. Uh, we drop from the ceiling, um, and you're all above it. You haven't tri triggered anything yet, so feel free to keep walking. Do which we want means, to know what's inside that wall? Which means that if we keep walking, it will trigger it. Yes, most likely will. Because <laughs> uh, it was. Got how can we get this hidden door open? Yeah, I, I was looking at the edges of the door and see if there's anything that. Looks With your twenty-five perception, honestly, the the way that whatever it is that locks this this um, uh, portion of the wall in place is currently engaged. So the only way to get it open is if you were to jam it really, really hard. Um, you, you, from your, I mean, 25 is really hard for like a disabled device to, to figure it out. So you think if you applied enough pressure the right way, you'd be able to kind of like bust open whatever it is that's holding this huge wheel because the huge wheel is itself very heavy. So likely you could break through whatever's there. But unfortunately, you have to kind of like wedge something in, try to get some leverage. You can't really see where the mechanism is, all that stuff. I mean. Could I just look at everyone's feet? Everyone's wearing boots. Yeah, yeah, but what are they standing on? Is there anything that's slightly depressed? No. You, and with your search check, which is a really good one, you do not find any triggering in this step, several before and several above. You do not find any triggering, um, uh, what are they called? Um, there, uh, push there plates or anything like that. There's a chance that this may be triggered at the top of the stairs as a way to stop people fleeing. Remember, they did deal in slaves. Split an invading force, perhaps? That too. Uh, which means there's two possibilities for this uh, door. It is either something the mole could use once the bars were down, or it is, in fact, something designed to kill those trapped by the bars. Hmm. Shall we continue on past this line uh, and then perhaps have a bit of a inspection of the ceiling, if that's where we think it's triggered from? Which really seems a very peculiar idea. It's clearly not meant to be accidentally triggered if it's from the ceiling. So I suggest that it's unlikely that it would kill us. This appears to be something that the Mal themselves may have used to get the door moving. Indeed. What invading force runs along trailing its hands on the ceiling? <laughs> Good point. I like this idea. Agreed. We just want to avoid the grooves. Yes, very, very much so. <laughs> he like rubs his arm. <laughs> so you guys continue on, obviously trying not to be foolish um, uh, in your in your. Uh, approach. I love that there's no elves, so they don't get free checks for secret doors, and there's no dwarves, oh, so they don't get free checks for secret doors. In I didn't know that Tunnel. was a thing. That's hilarious. They get free checks for secret doors in three uh, third edition in, in Pathfinder. As you walk by <laughs> secret doors, you just get a, a, a DM as a secret perception check to see if you know. So, wow. I mean, you some DMs would say roll me a perception check. No reason. 
<laughs> it's just like suspicious. My secret door senses are tingling. Yeah. It's like when Scott was like, do you carry on moving? And I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to move. <laughs> like, I, I haven't rolled yet today and I'm afraid to. Scott's like, oh, fuck. Wait, wait. I have a question. I have. I, I, this is going to be Valorant, like, stops everyone. He, he, the the bars did they angle into the circular door? Bowron says, "Stop it! Wait, wait, wait!" I understand what those bars are for now, and it's not good. Something is going to come down the stairs. The bars are going to direct it into that hole. I see. Some form hmm. of boulder. Most likely. That's why the walls have these and he rubs like the depressions <laughs> fantastic this is bad we should uh, um fuck maybe if we went down the stairs and had Jaden run up the top <laughs> <laughs> she looks at you, she looks at you incredulously <laughs> the willingness to murder someone Uh, with the, the way that the boulder was, was it big enough to reach the entirety of like the floor and the, this, the, the entirely to the ceiling and to the, to the bottom of the stairs? You're talking about the boulder. The you say if oh, it was a boulder. If, if this oh oh the wheel the, the wheel like yeah. the wheel that yeah pretty much yeah I mean not perfect but pretty much yeah. If we got right into the corners, it would still get us. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Do you feel that... You want to show Edward Elric? Is that what you're trying to do? Uh, Edward Elric, <laughs> Elric that? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> do you feel if that is, the, if that is the trap, that somebody would set it off intentionally, not having like a pressure plate or something like that? I don't believe so. I think we will likely find the pressure plate upcoming. So, and you yeah. would run down and see the bars raised and have nowhere to go. Yes. I mean, it's a long climb upstairs, so she's climbing up a mountain. <laughs> yeah, this is not good. Uh, we have to be very careful. If this trap is triggered, it could be... That could be it. Well, it's quite likely this is designed to take out a lot of people on the stairs. This is a difficult one because we could attempt to block the holes and then attempt to run down, but that really is rolling the dice. Very much so. Or we could attempt to forcibly open the door prior to this and damage the grooves in such a way that whatever it is would continue on. And we take shelter in that. Hold. That is not a bad idea. Yes, it's executing it. It's rather difficult. Yes. Either way, I see it. We need to block these holes. Back again. <laughs> how, how big are these holes? Uh, uh, so the bars are probably like maybe about mm, this big. You know what I mean? So it's about two inches in diameter, which is a pretty thick iron bar or steel bar, yeah. right? So, and you, there's not one, there's several, but what you're describing certainly could be done, Neil. That's not, that's not like a, you're going over there, you're trying to think, okay, how can I break this and what's probably the best method? And you're looking down and, and you know, maybe I can chisel through the area where it is meant to set itself. So when they come launching down, they don't set, they're actually like break through a um, Yes. Uh if we damage only a few, enough for us to fit through, this boulder would be quite large. It would be angled into the doorway, and we would be able to get through. That sounds like the best plan. I agree. I think uh, so. so. How are these these and how uh, how big are our coins? This is two two inch diameter. How big a like a gold oh. coin? Uh, much smaller than that. I would say, oh, hold on. Uh, so, because uh, 50 coins weighs one pound, which is 2.2 .2 kilograms, right? So, so um, uh, a 50th of that, 
not very large. I'm thinking of like um, slightly, like I want to say one and a half times like a, uh, an American quarter, which is I think around the same price as a two euro coin. You know what I mean? Like a decent size. That 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 means nothing to me. <laughs> Sorry. So I want to say, yeah, it's fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Two two of you. <laughs> So uh, I want to say like uh, just over an inch in diameter, so not quite there. But you could certainly <laughs> jam pack a ton of coins in there to make that to try to offset it. I need conversions. <laughs> you're so we, you're fine. Yeah. So if we had something equivalent of I a hammer, silver. we could wedge. I think silver's the hardest out of copper, silver, and gold. We could wedge a load of silver coins in there and give them a good hammer. Okay, 2.5 centimeters. There you go, Drake. Okay. <laughs> I like how we need something to go by. An inch. Thank you. <laughs> a unit of measurement. Uh, Listen, yeah. it's the most universal I, unit I of measurement Scott ever. Said, it is, Scott, it said, is. I, Scott said, I have a quart of water in the morning. What? <laughs> a, fourth, um, a fourth of a gallon. Okay. Um, it's, a hundred, a it's a fourth of 164 um, ounces. Actually, no, is there a rock nearby first? Um, a little, little rock that would fit in. The, 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 the area is pretty smooth. I mean, despite the fact that it's old and beat up or whatever, there's not like the rock collected. I mean, yeah, but I mean, like, it's just a thin little piece of metal. Yeah, no, I want to see how far down it goes. I want to drop it in. Oh, into the area where it sits in? It actually yeah. only sits down by about just shy of an inch. Like, it locks into place by oh, just shy of an inch. Are. So it's that. We'll call it 2.1 centimeters. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, they're, they're not deep, so that's good. Uh, we we wouldn't need to fill up that much, but I would much rather if we could uh, jam the top because if it's just gravity pulling them down, then that should be much easier to deal with. Oh uh, yeah, they they come down, don't they? Not up. Yes. If if we can stop them from coming down, but if they do come down and they don't lock in, it might be easier to break them out of the way, looking over at one, and then looking back at the stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's hope not a TPK session too, that'd be bad. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so what, what what do we have that can fit in the top? Coins. Candles wouldn't hold in, unfortunately. Um, Candles might work. Depends. If we were to fit a few coins in and then seal them in place with some wax, that may do enough to slow the momentum that whatever we put in the bottom will stop it from locking in place. That may work. He's going to get the uh, the three about, um, bolts out of from it, like a crossbar. Yep, you have those, of course. That may work too. Uh, I have three candles. Uh, if we cut, he's gonna actually like look at the bottom and like put the candle in as far, and then like break off the top. And so the the candle is filling up the the bottom of three of them, and he's like got the tops of the candles. These we'll use these first to wedge the stuff up the top, and then we can put more stuff on the bottom now that the wax is filled up there. Okay. Perfect. And I think Neil wanted to also shove coins in the bottom, but melt yeah, the yeah. candle into it to like hold it in place and fill the grooves and so on and so forth. So, so, so you don't you don't even need to melt the wax in the bottom. So you need to melt the wax on tops to hold the coins in place to absorb yeah, some of the go. initial impact. Yeah, you're right. You just okay. have to depress coins into yeah, yeah. the wax because oh. wax oh. will break in. Well, mm -hmm. in that case, he's going to pick that out. Uh, how how many uh, would how many coins do we need to fill those up? Do you think this is an out of game. we put as many as we can. I, I don't know what what the size of the coins are, so. Well, it's it's also about like thickness now as well, I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just assume they're all relatively the same uh, uh, width and diameter. Uh, the coins are give or take for your measurements, give or take uh, a centimeter or two. So uh, between copper, uh, silver, electrum, and, and gold, you don't usually use platinum. Those are pretty rare. Um, yeah. So those are so the, the give or take. That's not that big of a difference. Um, gold are going to be the largest ones just because they have, you know, the greatest value. And oh, sorry, gold is, is also the sorry. softest. S S silver, yeah. silver are actually going to be the largest ones because they yeah, have significantly less. Hardest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Then uh, I don't know if, how you manage the conversions of. Uh, do, am I allowed to convert 
gold into into silver because I have a lot of gold, but we never. I have, pl I have, pl like, I have plenty of silver. Yeah, there you go. So I would suggest that we we put as many silver ones as we can in the bottom holes, or the, the a couple of bottom holes because we want to make a gap, I guess, two bars wide so that we can slip through. Would that? Uh, would how, that yeah, actually, that... how far away? Uh, how how many do we need to block off for one to fit through? Yeah, he, he's, he's the one that we're rush. worried about. <laughs> yep. yep. So, so you, why don't we just assume seven silver per uh, per hole would be overfilling it just by a little bit, so you're comfortable. That's like a nice, easy number. Six or seven, your call, um, uh, per groove. And, how many grooves how many, did you want to do? Yeah, yeah, that's what we're asking. That's, how much? Oh, how my much? apologies. I thought you were asking per coin, not width that you no. need to. So, uh, I mean, honestly, none of you guys are particularly beefy people. So three bars, you'd be able to slip through. Four bars, you'd be able to charge through. We want three then because we don't want to risk this boulder smashing through whatever's yeah. there. Yeah. Okay, so that's... Uh, 12 uh, coins. What? I thought it was seven per thing. Yeah, six, six, six or seven. Oh, yeah, we need yeah. to be three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so 21, 20. 21. Yeah. He, he, would actually, uh, uh, he would actually hand you two gold as you fill that out. <laughs> and so um, uh, you're setting this up there. There are needles to the best of your ability. Uh, and, you know, all three of you guys do this. It's not like it's any one person. You guys, and there's no really checks for this either. It's a pretty almost rote action at this point. You're setting up coins, squishing in the wax, so on and so forth. As for the overhead portion, the... Uh, so um, the, yeah, the overhead one, we only want like two coins and then as much wax sealing it as possible because it's going to come out. It's just to slow that initial momentum, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I can't think of a better way to, way to seal it up there. Okay, well, why don't we go to break um, and when we come back, we will uh, we'll see what, what happens. It's been about an hour since we started playing. Isn't uh, that exciting? <laughs> uh, also, uh, Val will... Uh, would ice freeze the the wax enough to be solid? Oh, do, do wax just solidifies well enough, anyways? Yeah, yeah, I, I know, but like, make it harder. I think that might actually make it worse. Yeah, it, it would just make it brittle. You know, you just need yeah, to hold the coins in place. All right. Yeah. So why don't we go to break? We'll come back in just a couple of minutes. Everybody, pee poo. Do you got to do? We'll be back in a couple of minutes, and we'll see how this plays out. All right. All right. Bye bye. Why? I'm gonna go pee. <laughs> <laughs> 